These past 13 months have been fantastic for the world of esports. Major competitive games continue to have better tournaments that are more and more efficiently run as viewer numbers continue to grow for virtually every game out there now. Not only that, but more and more games are getting greater exposure, and although there are plenty of rivalries between certain games, for the most part a lot of esports fans seem happy to support and watch other events, not just the bracket for their main game or their main game's championship. But if I had to pick one thing, thing to make an example of, one thing to shine a light on as the most positive force that's done a ton for the esports scene in this past year, it would have to be the fantastic documentaries we've seen. It's great to see the growth of each community and watch some awesome events, but seeing the world behind everything that were officially shown on stream is an amazing thing to watch. Documentaries in general play a very interesting role in the world, where all these people that we hold in very high regard in society, politicians, famous artists, architects, or directors are suddenly showing this personal side to them that we never get to see, not just what we see throughout the work that they produce in their lifetime. It's great to see this hidden behind the scenes uh, sort of side to esports through the recent documentaries that we've seen, and we've seen some fantastic documentaries in this past year. We started off the year with the release of the League of Legends team CLG's documentary. Counter Logic Gaming had been working on their documentary for a while, over a year following the team all around the world, but they did run into a few snags with production after making a deal with Machinima Versus to have them help produce some of their content. In the end, the initial documentary released by Machinima Versus received a good amount of criticism, but after the community responded with their complaints, CLG released the original documentary shot by Max Sims, which turned out to be fantastic, although a bit unfinished. We got to follow CLG as they traveled all around the world, all the way over to Korea, Korea, in their attempts to invest as much time and effort as they could into becoming as good of a team as possible. But more importantly, League of Legends fans finally were able to see what it's like offstage for the pros, and the thought process and decision making from everything between picks and bans versus specific teams like Dignitas, all the way to replacing a teammate. Later on in the year, around September, we would see the release of State of Play, which was a documentary on StarCraft esports in Korea. This documentary was shot incredibly well, just beautiful cinematography, similarly to CLG's original, and showed us just how much esports and StarCraft Brood War in particular was, and still is, intertwined with daily life in South Korea. The documentary team followed around all sorts of players throughout the pro spectrum, from those trying to just convince their family and the world that they're good enough to compete, all the way to some of the best players in the world, including Jadong himself. This was perhaps the first time the Western world was introduced to the fascinating culture of esports in Korea and how the infrastructure works on a very specific note, not only allowing players to play games competitively, but also getting major corporations worth billions and billions of dollars invested into teams, players, and championships. It wasn't until recently though that we've seen the bar being set from a production standpoint for just how good an esports documentary can be, with Valve releasing their film Free to Play this past March. Not only did they document the lives of competitive gamers and show the world just what the Dota 2 competitive scene is all about, but they did so in such spectacular fashion, doing things like going back into the Source engine to recreate battles during the International for cinematic effect, which was just beautiful to watch from a viewer's standpoint. They showed us what can be done when a major company throws their weight behind a project like this and told the stories of areas that we hadn't really seen much before from previous documentaries, following the European scene and certain players in Europe, as well as other areas like China and Southeast Asia, specifically Singapore, explaining how their game is viewed in all these different countries. But by far the best documentary that we've seen in these past 13 months has got to be The Smash Brothers, released back in October by Samox and East Point Pictures. Not only was this a fantastic documentary to watch, like all the ones mentioned before it, seeing the stories of all these players this time over the course of eight or nine years, but this documentary did a major part in revitalizing the Smash community, getting it back to EVO again, getting it back to MLG, and growing it to a point where more people than ever know about the friendly community, exciting esport, and surprisingly deep and intricate experience that is competitive Super Smash Bros. Melee. This was a crowdfunded documentary that was able to turn an entire competitive scene around, showing again just how much a well-produced documentary can do. 
These documentaries gave us something that the general population of the world almost never gets to see, expressing the views of what it's like to be a part of an exclusive group of people, only the best in the world. Not only do they provide amazing content to the esports communities though, but they also give us an example of just straight up art, to be frank. I swear, some of the cinematography, the lighting, the way the stories are structured in some of these documentaries looks on par with major productions seen on television. The State of Play documentary specifically was featured at film festivals all around the world, and this is another fantastic field that has the potential to break into mainstream media and show the rest of the world just how interesting playing video games can be. The bar's been set, now it's just a matter of time before someone breaks past it again. There's currently a Kickstarter for another Smash Brothers documentary being created by Samox, this one focusing on Armada, a huge player who did wonders for the competitive scene but wasn't able to be given a spot spotlight in the original nine episodes, but with a much larger budget this time and promises that it will be a full-length feature film featured on sites like Hulu and Netflix and viewable and enjoyable by video game fans and non-video game fans alike, I have very high hopes for what Samox can come up with. Whether you're talking about EVO moment number 37 or the quadruple overtime counter-strike match between Fnatic and Frag Executors, these Cinderella stories and intense rivalries deserve to be documented, and I get happier and happier with each new project that sees success. The world of esports is so interesting, considering it most often started underground in people's basements, in their rooms as it rained outside watching each other play, cheering for their favorite player, and seeing just how far a human being can push their respective video game. With all the heartbreak and joy that each game has had a huge amount of, it's great to see all these artistically crafted stories being brought to life on the big screen. This past year will be a hard one to top, but I'm sure the best that these communities have to offer is yet to come, and I look forward to viewing the next big thing.